Hi there, my name is Kayla Kalish, and you're watching and reading Rising Talent Magazine. Kayla, at what age did you start taking dance and aerial classes? When I was a child, I started taking dance classes at the ripe old age of 18 months old. My grandmother kind of stumbled me into the classes, and after a while I learned to love it. So when I was a kid, I started working on ballet, tap, as well as jazz, which were the main fundamentals, and I threw in a little, little bit of acrobatics when I was a child. When I started taking aerial, I happened to be 10 or 11 years old, I'm not sure if I quite remember, but I started taking aerial as a young child, 10 or 11 years old, and ever since then I've absolutely fallen in love with it, and that's something that I definitely could never forget in my life. What does dance mean to you? Dance is an embodiment of art. It allows you to express your emotions, tell a story, and be an individual in which you may not always be. As an individual who performs in the arts as well as aerial and dance, I pretty much just love seeing other people smile, I love entertaining the audience, and I love having the opportunity just to embody art in my own form. Kayla, who are your inspirations? My biggest inspiration was my grandmother, Marie Varchulik, who unfortunately passed a couple months ago. She taught me how to dance when I was a child, she supported me, and she was always there whenever I needed support. She pretty much motivated me to be the person that I am today, and she taught me to be the stronger person. A second individual that I definitely look up to as a role model is my mother. Even though we've fought and we've argued, especially in my younger years, I've matured as an adult and I've learned to understand that she was just trying to help me and become a better individual. I look up to her now, and I also look to her for support when I go into my auditions, as well as future performances. Kayla, what is your favorite type of dance to learn and watch? My favorite type of dance to learn and watch has always been acrobatics. Ever since a kid, I absolutely love just to bend, contort myself, show off flexibility, and just see what I could do. Watching it is absolutely awe-inspiring because you can look at the contortionist out in the world and see what crazy things that they can do to defy their bodies. Aside from that, I absolutely love watching ballet, I like to train in ballet, and I like working on point. So all of those have to be one of my favorite aspects in dance. Kayla, in Ariel, what is your favorite apparatus? My favorite apparatus has to be a longtime good old friend, the Ariel Lyra, or hoop as many might perceive it. It's a big metal apparatus that's in the shape of a hoop that allows you to spin and do anything that you can imagine. A lot of people actually look at it and they think it's a hula hoop that I'm just gonna swing around my hips. But uh, when it's about 10 to 15 pounds, I don't think you could swing it around. <laughs> I've loved it because it's just been something I can always rely on, I can go back to. If I'm ever in a bad mood or feeling sore, it's something that I'm just comfortable in going back to. So, Ariel Lira for the win. Kayla, what is more challenging in your eyes, a solo performance or a group dance? Looking at it from a dancer's perspective, I have to say that a group performance is actually more challenging than a solo performance. Because when you're in a group, you are expected to work alongside other individuals. You have to match your timing, you have to match your movements, and you have to ensure that everybody is doing the exact precise thing that was choreographed. There's no screwing up in group dances, but there is screwing up in solos. <laughs> Nobody knows your routine in a solo, so that's why I think group dances are far harder. Kayla, what do you remember as your first dance competition solo. My first dance competition solo that I fully remember was doing a routine called Little Red Riding Hood. I was about four or five years old. I had a gorgeous little two-piece outfit. Well, it was a two-piece in costuming, <laughs> but it was all a one-piece costume that had a cute little sparkly skirt, suspenders, and puffy sleeves. We rolled a mat out for myself, I had a cute little basket, and I did an entire acro routine at Spotlight Competition. I ended up winning my first diamond that year, and I was incredibly proud for what I'd done. Kayla, what has been your favorite dance as a duet? My favorite duet had to be when I competed in the World Dance Championships in Barcelona, Spain. 
I got to work alongside my idol at the time when I was about 13 years old, and we performed a duet called Some Enchanted Evening. It was a very lyrical slash ballet based routine where we timed up our choreography and managed to fit all of our movements almost at the exact same time. I remember, I remember a tumbling pass that we did that we had such perfect choreography between each other that if you looked at the photos, our legs lined up and you couldn't tell the difference between the two individuals that were there. Who was so. your partner? I got to work alongside Nick Daniels, who was a former Dance Moms star back in the day. He was um, extremely talented, we shared the same flexibility and talent, so just working alongside him was a dream come true at the time. Very cool. Kayla, what was your favorite dance outfit worn during a solo? Whew, that's a little tough one. I think one of my favorite, or my favorite all-time dance outfit that I got to wear not as all flashy as some might think, but I had a custom Jack Skellington costume that I made for a Nightmare Before Christmas routine when I was a child. I had the entire rhinestoned collar all the way down to the tailored sleeves, which with um, painted spots, or not painted spots, with painted stripes all the way down the bottom. Each one was embossed with Swarovski rhinestones, and I even did my face makeup to match everything. It was really comfortable because I got to stretch as I got older with it, and I just loved being the character. So that had to be my all-time favorite costume, Jack Skellington. Kayla, what is your favorite dance trick? My favorite dance trick in the dance realm itself, not acrobatics, would have to be a grand jeté. It's when a dancer leaps through the air, extending both legs out into a full split, and they can accompany with their arms in various positions, whether it be third, whether it be full fifth, or anywhere along the lines. It's one of my favorites because it's a very classical move and it allows you to show the technique and your ability. Do you have advice for anyone wanting to start dance? If you would like to start dance, I would definitely encourage you to be aware and know what you're getting into. A lot of dancers jump into dance and they don't understand the cost associated with it, the amount of hours that are required to become a good dancer, and also the physical burdens that can be opposed about yourself. So I recommend you definitely stretch and keep your body in a primed position, talk with your parents and know what you're getting into before going ahead, and decide if you want to go for the recreational or more competitive route. Everyone's different, but if you want to be a dancer, I encourage you all just to achieve your goals, to have one thing set in your mind, and to be the very best you can be. Kayla, if you had a soundtrack to your life, what song or songs would have to be on that soundtrack? Two songs that I know for certain that have to be on my soundtrack, actually three now that <laughs> I think about it, would have to be Dance 10 Looks 3 from A Chorus Line, We Are the Champions by Queen, which was actually one of the songs that constantly played every year I attended the World Dance Championships in Barcelona, Spain, and Chasina, Italy as a five-time World Dance Champion. And also, a longtime favorite that I've always had true in my heart since I was a kid, A Wonderful World. It's something that I've always loved as a child and I definitely would want to add it just to bring up happy memories and put myself in a good mood. Very nice. What charity is closest to your heart? I don't know if you would consider it entirely a charity, but I fully support a nonprofit under the name of Fueled by the Fallen. It helps our veterans and helps remember those who have been forgotten in all of our wars, as well as our police officers who are downed in, um, in the field. I've been an ambassador for the Fueled by the Fallen for many years, and I strongly support the individuals that are behind the organization. I love to see it grow and prosper, and I hope other people start to understand the memories that have been forgotten. And our final question for today is, do you have a favorite quote or saying that is always on your mind? I'm a bit of an Alice in Wonderland buff, so one of the biggest things that I have to enjoy and I like to think about, especially when you're an artist in the world, is the quote from Alice in Wonderland called, we are all mad here. Because nobody is actually sane, we're all crazy artists and we all understand that there's a process to our art. So that's one thing that's always crept in my mind. Thank you very much for your time, and I definitely hope you enjoy my video.